what had happened came to Peter how many hours later three hours later and I'm saying if she wasn't a late comer she wouldn't have died if she had come just about five minutes after the husband died and she, and she saw the people carrying the husband out and then uh, what happened what happened don't you know that your husband said this and that that's why she's dead they're carrying her out if she had not been this late comer coming late three hours later and then peter said now tell me sapphira is it for so much i surrender we told a lie i am sorry i don't want to die i repent will she have died no you see there are simple simple things you can do so that your life will not just be wasted like that and I pray that your life will not be wasted in Jesus' name. And look at this in Genesis chapter 20. A purposeful revelation that will make you avoid death, prevent death. That will make you to live a long life. You will live all your days, you will not die before your time. We're looking at Genesis chapter 20 verse 3. But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said unto him, Behold, Thou art but a dead man. You are dead already. For the woman which thou hast taken, for she is a man's wife. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, wilt thou also, wilt thou also slay a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister. And she, even she herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream, Yes, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thine heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. Now therefore restore the man his wife, for he is a prophet, and he shall pray for thee, and thou shalt lay, you will not die. And if, but, and if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. That man took warning, that man received that revelation, and he did not die. And if we take the revelation, the warning the Lord is giving us, we will not die prematurely in Jesus' name. And let me show you the New Testament, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 21. Acts chapter 21, and I'm reading there from verse 10. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus says the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that has that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. And when we heard these things, both we and they of that place besought him not to go up to Jerusalem. Look at verse 13. Then Paul answered, What mean ye to weep and to break mine heart? I am ready not to, not to be bound only, but also to die at Jerusalem, but for the name of the Lord Jesus. And when he would not be persuaded, we see his saying, the will of the Lord be done. Now as you look at that story, I'm willing to die, ready to die, not ready to be bound at Jerusalem. But look at chapter 23. Uh, this, uh, we need wisdom and we need to read the Bible very clearly and very thoroughly so that our lives will be preserved for His glory. I said our lives will be preserved for His glory. He said, I am ready not only to be bound but also to what? To die at Jerusalem. Chapter 23 now, verse 11. And the night following, the Lord stood by him and said, Be of good cheer, Paul, for as thou hast testified of me, where? In Jerusalem, so must thou bear witness also at Rome. Verse 12, And when it was day, certain of the Jews bound, binded themselves together, and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat 
nor drink till they had killed Paul. You look at chapter 21, he said, I'm ready to be bound and even to die. You look at chapter 23, God said, no, I don't want to die now in Jerusalem. As a born witness for me in Jerusalem, you'll be in Rome, you'll be a witness for me. And in that same Jerusalem, more than 40 people bound themselves together and he said, we will not eat anything until we kill Paul, verse 13. And there were more than 40 which had made this conspiracy. And they came to the chief priests and the elders and said, we have bound ourselves on a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now therefore, ye, now therefore, ye with the council signify to the chief captain that she, that she bring him down unto you tomorrow. And as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him, and we, or even or ever, he come near, are ready to kill him. And when Paul's sister's son heard of their lying in wait, he went and entered into the castle. What he do? And told Paul. What did Paul say? Did Paul tell the young man, don't worry. I'm ready to die. And I will die. Did he say that? When God gives us the revelation, even though you are consecrated, even though you are committed, even though you put your life on the line, I'll say, I'm ready to be bound. Not only to be bound, even to die. When the revelation comes to you as to how to preserve your life for a greater ministry, you do that. Look at the next thing. It says, Paul called one of the centurions to him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he has a certain thing to tell him. Look at wisdom. Look at strategy. And look at security. And then eventually, so he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said, Paul, the prisoner, called me unto him and prayed me, pleaded with me to bring this young man unto thee, who has something to say unto thee. Then the chief captain took him by the hand and went to with him aside privately, that's security now, and asked him, what is that that thou hast to tell me? And he said, the Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council as though they would inquire some words of him more perfectly. But do not thou yield to them, for there lie a wage from, from he, for him of them more than forty men which have bound themselves with an oath that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him and now are they ready looking for a promise from thee so the chief captain then let the young man depart and charged him see that see thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me that's security again and he called unto him two centurions saying make ready two hundred soldiers to go to Caesarea and horsemen and three score and ten and spearmen two hundred at the third hour of the night of the night and provide them bees that they may set Paul on and bring him safe, secure, sound, protected unto Felix the governor. You can see here death to be avoided. When you see danger in front, you're not just going to go and say, I don't care. After all, if I die, Somebody is there that will pray for me. I will get up. Is that a good attitude? No. Protect your life. Preserve your life. Avoid untimely death. Avoid avoidable death. Avoid preventable death. Let me show you something before we pray. Jeremiah chapter 14. Verse 13. Moreover, Johanan, the son of Career. And all the captain of the forces that were in the field came to get a liar to misspell and said unto him, Dost thou certainly know that Beardis, the king of the Ammonites, have sent Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, to slay thee? But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, believed them not. Here revelation came, information came. Do you know? 
that Ishmael is coming to kill you. Then Johanan, the son of Korea, paid to get a liar in mystery, secretly saying, Let me go, I pray you. And I will slay Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, and no man shall know it. Wherefore shall he slay thee, that all the Jews which are gathered unto thee shall be scattered, and the remnant of Judah perish. But Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, said unto Johanan, the son of Karea, Thou shalt not do this thing, for thou speakest falsely of Ishmael. The people came and they said, you know what? Ishmael is coming. He's going to kill you. You'll be dead. And he will not believe it. He will not even investigate. Look at chapter 41 from verse 1. Now it came to pass. The seventh month. That Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, the son of Elishaman, of the seed royal, and the princes of the king, even ten men within, came unto Gedaliah, the son of Ahikam, to Mispil. And there they did eat bread together in Mispil. This is the man they warned him about. They told him, this management is after you. It's going to take off your head. It's going to kill you. You'll be dead by this time next week if you're not careful. Ah, don't worry about that. It's all a lie. You're speaking falsely concerning Ishmael. Look at verse 2. Then arose Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, and the ten men that were with him. And uh, what did he do? Smote Gedalah, the son of Ahikam, the son of Shaphan, with the sword and slew him. Whom the king of Babylon had made governor over the land. And Ishmael also slew the Jews that were with him. Avoidable death. They could have avoided this. Preventable death. They could have prevented this. They need prevent it. You know, the people that are not taking care of their lives, they, they pray, they fast, they read Bible. They don't treat their Bibles right. And eventually, when revelation comes to them, avoid this, avoid that, prevent death. They don't do anything. And it says, Ishmael also slew all the Jews that were with him. Even with Gedaliah at Mispe and the, uh, the Chaldeans that were found there. And the men of war. And it came to pass the second day after uh, he had slain Gedaliah, and no man knew it. He so planned it that no man knew that now he's carried out the plot and the plan that there came Satan from Shechem and from Shiloh and from Samaria, even first called men, having their beards shaven and their clothes rent and having caught themselves with offerings and incense in their hands to bring them to the house of the Lord. And Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, went forth from his babe to meet them. What was he doing? Weeping all along as he went. Look at this murderous fellow. Look at this terrible, wicked man. He had killed Gedela and all the people there. And then he met all these people coming. And this group wanted to offer to the Lord and to pretend that he was a good man. Should in case they may know later that this happened, he was crying and weeping. And then it says, simple saying, uh, and looking at that verse says, they were weeping as he went, and it came to pass as he met them. He said unto them, Come to get a liar, the son of Aikam. And it was so when they came into the midst of the city that Ishmael, the son of Nathaniah, did what? Look at this man that was crying in the previous verse, weeping pretending that was sorrowful or something happening because these other people were coming and they shaved their beard and also they were also having some sorrow because of that he made them weeping he slew them and he cast them into the midst of the pit he and the men that were within I look at verse 9 now the pit wherein Ishmael had cast all the dead bodies of the men whom he had slain because of Gedaliah. All those other people died also because they were associated with Gedaliah. Don't be associated with somebody who is careless. Somebody will give him revelation to avoid death. He's not going to take care. He's not going to take heed of that revelation. 
and he's just walking careless and frivolous and just living his life. Don't associate with people like that because when you do, anything that happens to them might happen to you. We well, want you to remain alive, you are going to remain alive. A wise man, a prudent man, when he foresees evil, will hide himself and protect himself and will not waste his life. Don't waste your life and don't die prematurely. You have a lot to do. After you are through, when you fulfill your ministry like John, will let you go, but now you cannot go. In Proverbs chapter 22, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3, A prudent man foresees the evil and hideth himself. Yet the last shall have seen that. They warned him. Ishmael is coming. And you know Ishmael. You know the tribe he came from. You know the people that he belongs to. And you know the hatred in their heart. You know their plan. Ishmael, their father, is coming. And is coming to slay you. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself. But the simple pass on and are punished. I pray that God was giving us this or preserve us in Jesus name do you know that righteousness will protect your life holiness will preserve your life Proverbs chapter 10 verse 2 Proverbs chapter 10 verse 2 treasures of wickedness profit nothing but righteousness delivereth from death remain righteous righteousness delivers from death chapter 11 of Proverbs verse 4 11 verse 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Verse 19. In verse 19, as righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it unto his own death. Chapter 12, verse 28. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 28. In the way of righteousness is life. In the path thereof, there is no death. Remain righteous and death will be shielded away from you in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. The Lord has spoken much to us and has given us wisdom. and shown us how to remain alive. Remain alive. Remain alive. Pray on what you have heard. It's your chance. Don't be like Gedaliah. Careless. He heard, never made use, positive use of the information that he had. Make a positive use of the information you have today. A prudent man, a wise man, foreseeth the evil, and he hideth himself. Tell the Lord, the Lord has given us instruction. Has given us warning, has given us wisdom. Don't just run around trying to raise the dead. You need perception. Perception. Perception of the spirit. Obedience to the Spirit of God. Don't just run around doing this and that. Lay hands suddenly on no man. Hear the voice of the Lord before you pray. Be obedient to the Spirit. Wisdom from the Spirit. Wisdom. The wisdom to live. The wisdom to live a full life, a fulfilled life, a fruitful life, protected life, preserved life. Freedom from premature deaths. Avoidable deaths. Wisdom is better than strength. Wisdom is better than weapons of war. And of power.
revelation. Don't live a life that is dry, a life that is void, void of revelation from above, pushed here and there by people. Coordinator, group coordinator, they are calling you. What happened? Somebody died in the next house. They say you are the leader of the church in this locality. Come and pray, come and pray, come and pray. Hurry up, hurry up. Revelation from the Spirit. Don't allow people to push you around. 